Hello Travelers, Boardman21 here and today got another build for you and this one is a Fire Wraith Necromancer. It is a minion build and this one's brought to you because a Demise8422 has asked for a Fire Wraith build in the comments below. So make sure that if you want me to work on a build that you've been interested in and just want me to take a look at, comment it below. Now I got a lot of inspiration out of this build from Lizard IRL. He gave me uh, a whole bunch of insights to it and I'm gonna link his build which is on max roll in the description below which is very very similar to this one I did a couple of no changes and a couple of things a little bit differently just to get a little bit more out of the raids but that's just to reflect my play style which is just slightly different than how he plays it but this build is probably the most broken minion build in the game right now you can have up to 15 fire rays doing huge, huge crits, attacking very, very fast, and you drain life out of them, you drain mana out of them, so you can constantly spam them and just have a ton of life if you do get hit. Now, I'm pushing 400 plus corruption with this right now. You can also do tier 4 Jura without any issues, so if you're looking for one that's great for single target damage and for running high corruption, even arena pushing is really good for this one, I definitely recommend giving this build a shot. With that in mind, let's go ahead and get into the skills, the passives, and just how this build works. For skills, we're running Dreadshade with plus two levels, Drain Life, Summon Volatile Zombie with plus two levels, Summon Wraith with plus five levels, really easy to get, I'll show you how, and Transplant with just the normal amount of levels. For Dreadshade, we have this set up to affect our minion to give them as much damage and attack speed as possible, while also giving us some armor based on vitality that we have and then of course we also frenzy them which is pretty cool so we got one point in spectral presence three points in die in covid for that increased attack and cast speed for our flame race that we're going to be putting them on four points in grim fate gives them increased area for the dread shade itself and then increased damage multiplicative damage for the wraith or minion that it is on one point in symbiotic apparition so that we can be affected by the aura this is good because again based on our vitality we can get flat armor from it we've got three points in a flesh harvest so that you get all the buffs from dreadshade are increased as you have missing health and flamers will slowly go down in health so the more health they're missing the more damage and cast speed they will get and then we got one point in marty doom which gives us that 25 flat armor per point of vitality two points in wisdom of the dead to make it cost a little bit less for dreadshade four points in lingering doom gives reduced health decay as well as flat necrotic damage for our flame rays one point in congregation of shades so we can have plus one maximum shades we could have multiple ones of these up on different minions although you only need to have one active if you have all of your flame rays in one spot and then two points in frenzied phantom so that they get two seconds of frenzied state which gives them increase cast speed which will help them cast those fireballs even faster for drain life we're going to have this affect minions so that we can target our own minions and have them give us mana and life back we got three points in thought seal to reduce the channel cost it does get pretty spendy but again you're going to be getting lots of mana back two points in condemnation so that there are four stacks of dam applied per second of course that is going to be to your minions not to enemies Three points to Ravenous for increased health leech and increased damage versus low life. Again, we're targeting our minions. Two points in Insatiable for increased health leech and increased channel cost, but this will leech even more. But we just need that to unlock the Dark Shackles so that Drain Life is now cast instead of channeled. And it lasts for three seconds and gives it a much higher mana cost. With two points in Enduring Night, the duration goes from three seconds up to five seconds, and this does give it even more mana cost. And then the last point in Grasp of the Dan, so you can have additional targets. Again, mana cost going up, which is why it's really important to get those three points in Thought Seal, because even with those, we're still at an 83 mana cost every time we cast it. Not a big deal. We're going to get tons of mana back from it, though. And that's on this side with three points in Empowered Drain, one point in Soul Blast, one point in Hectotome, so we can now target our minions and we get 10 mana per second per minion in the area of drain life and you can put all your flame rays in one spot we can get up to like i believe 13 targets with it so you can get 130 mana back a second it's absolutely broken at some point i assume this will eventually get nerfed or or just taken away but it's been here for years and then one point in necrotic feast for that increased health leech since we are only targeting our minions with this and getting life from them any leech we can get or as much leech as we can is really nice that'll keep your life full and your mana full 
For some volatile zombies, we're using this to generate some ward and then just for a bit of extra damage. So we got one point in Path of Destruction, two points in Necromantic Fervor, one point in Vital Ward so that all the health we would have gained is instead ward. Based on the zombie's max health, we're going to get 0.8% of that as ward. And then three points in Awakening Presence, so there's a chance to cast a volatile zombie on minion death. And because we're just going through flame rays, that's why we're going to have a bunch of zombies disappearing when we don't even manually cast them. 5 points in Fervor, gives them more damage and more move speed, 2 points in Forceful Commander, so we can summon them faster for cheaper, 3 points in Grave Attunement, so they do more damage, 1 point in Daunting Blast, 2 points in Ravenous, so they have 60% more hit damage against bosses and rares, which is more likely when you're going to really be spamming them, and then 2 points in Pull the Grave to give them that kill threshold. For Summon Wraith, which we have plus 5 levels to, and that's because the Arborant's Call Unique gives us plus levels as well as the Amulet for Fire Minions is going to give plus levels. So we don't even have to get plus levels to the skill. You can easily get 4 more levels to this if you want, and if you did, I would recommend getting even more Maximum Rays. But with this setup, we've got 1 point in Locus of Resurrection, so that the Rays are summoned where we target them. 1 point in Locus of Death, so that they have 45% more damage. It does give them more melee attack speed, which we're not using in this case, but your rays can no longer move. It's not a problem because resummoning them is really easy to do. Two points in haunting for them to have additional health. Five points in reapers so they have flat necrotic damage, which is a big boost to their damage even though we get lots of spell damage elsewhere. Three points in necrotic hunger so they have more necrotic damage, which is really going to boost that flat 20 they got. And you also get more flat necrotic in your passives. The Wraithbringer makes it much faster to summon them as well as makes them much cheaper to summon. Two points in Flame Wraith gives you a 22% chance for a Flame Wraith instead of a normal Wraith along with a couple of idols we're going to be at 100% chance. Also gives them 10% more damage. One point in Spirit Link for that critical strike chance for them. Three points in Dawn of the Fall for even more critical strike chance as well as leeching that critical strike damage they do. And Dust of the Living is a huge critical multiplier for them giving them 90% more crit multi so we're going to have them close to 100% crit just doing huge huge crit damage and then for transplant we have this setup for us to get some bone armor and some extra just armor and healing out of that as well as some kill thresholds we've got three points in acolytes fervor one point in rain of blood three points in violent emergence so we have that 15 percent kill threshold so we can finish off enemies at low life one point in sticky blood two points in fleeting form two points in anima Three points in bone armor so that we get some flat armor and less damage taken when bone armor is active. And then two points in plated, bo uh, plated bone for the bone armor effect. And three points in apostasy to make that bone armor last longer. And that just gives us kind of a little bit more of a defensive option. Although we're already going to be not only tanky, but have a lot of health leech coming in at all times. As long as you're constantly hitting your minions with that drain life. For passives, we've got 20 points in the Acolyte base class with 8 points in Forbidden Knowledge, 7 points in Stolen Vitality, and 5 points in Dark Rituals. We're obviously always using a minion skill, so we're going to be able to use this quite a bit. Always have it up. we got 10 points in the Lich with all 10 points in Apocrypha. That's for the Intelligence and the Increased Mana Regen. It's also to unlock Drain Life, and it also unlocks Aura of Decay, which you can snapshot Aura of Decay to heal you for full life every second. Hopefully that gets fixed by one point but if it doesn't it might be something we have to start adding into the guides as it's a big boost to your survivability as well as it can give you some other defenses so we're not going to do it right now but eventually it might be a thing you have to do to be there at the top and most optimized for the build and then for the necromancer we've got 83 points with one point an exiler of hunger eight points in risen army three points in cursed blood five points in reclamation of souls eight points in Aegis fall five points in frantic summons eight points in tyrant three points in cling to life four points in empty the graves ten points in moonlight prior five points in river of bones ten points in heresy three points in right of undeath and ten points in blades of the forlorn and if we had more passive points to put in you could easily put them into some other things giving your minions uh and whispereaver if you put eight points in here you get i think it's a 98 or 96 percent chance that all the mana you spend is going to be gained back as ward so a little extra survivability but there's some other things you can do in here but we just don't have the passive points for it For the character sheet, you can see I'm just a little shy on poison resist, but for the most part, all of our resistances are capped. We've got quite a bit of armor. Again, that armor is going to go up per minion that we have out, and then also with dread shade. So to just show you an example, if I throw out a flame wraith, 
we get a little bit extra flat armor and if I throw a dread shade on it and we're inside that you can see our armor goes up quite a bit especially as he loses life and that effect goes up so and if we have a whole bunch of minions you can see we have quite a bit of armor going on and it just allows you when you're just staying in the same spot especially against bosses and single targets to really be tanky just sitting there in that same spot and then for the other defenses, we do have full endurance, your critical strike avoidance, you're going to want both of those. For minions, we have uh, about 300% minion critical strike multiplier. You could get more, especially if you changed amulets around and you went with death rattle instead of our fire minion one that we're using. Uh, increased minion health sits at 276%. You really don't need to put many minion stats other than minion damage on your gear because they're ones that are just dying all the time anyways you're constantly resummoning so having a tons of life doesn't do much for them and then for minion spell damage the big one you can see we're at 836 percent most of that's coming on the weapon as we had lp on it and end up getting minion spell damage you don't need that much but it's definitely going to be what makes this build really really tick as you optimize it in the end so for the uniques of this build, you don't need all these uniques. The one that I definitely recommend is going to be Aberrant's Call, because this gives you plus maximum raise. It also gives you a bunch of levels to summon Wraith, and it's going to allow you to have a lot more of them, which is what this build is really based around. So I highly recommend that you don't have to have LP on it. However, if you do, getting cast speed so you can summon the raise faster and minion spell damage so they do more damage is two huge things that you can definitely put on it. Another unique is Drawer's Obsession. You really don't need this, but this item does allow the stats on them to apply to your minions. It has a flat spell damage, which is huge for the flame rays. Really going to boost their damage with that. And then, of course, if it has LP on it, which one LP is not too hard to get, you can uh, put cast speed on. Now, remember, every time you do Drawer and the gloves fall, they have a minimum one LP. So you just have to keep trying until you get one and get cast speed on it. And that way, your flame rays get that cast speed. So, pretty easy LP legendary to get. And then the last unique is going to be Logi's Hunger, which drops on the spirits of fire timeline also one that's pretty easy to farm for this will give your minions critical strike chance plus two to fire minion skills those two things along with the leech for your minion is going to keep them alive a little bit longer but for the most part just give them a lot of crit chance and give you an extra couple points to spend in the tree elsewhere you're just going to want minion critical strike chance minion fire damage just stack as much life and get your defenses in order is really all you need stacking a bunch of int is good as well in case you have a little bit of ward but really it just comes down with the rest of your gear you just need to get some minion damage, minion stats like the critical strike chance that's going to help them crit more often, and then all of your defenses. You really don't have to uh, have specific things like minion damage, mana regen, uh, all of those don't really matter too much in the build, so feel free to just get your uh, resistances up first, your endurance, your critical strike avoidance in that first, and then worry about adding in some minion damage and minion crit chance. For idols, two of the important ones, you want that summoned chance for summon wraith. As a suffix, health is best, and then for the 1x3s, increased health with minion critical strike chance are huge for the build, so you're going to want to roll four of those as well. And then for how to play this build, it's really, really simple. You're literally just going to throw flame rays out in front of you and hit them with a drain life to be getting all your mana back, which kind of leads you to this conundrum where you can literally just go back and forth, keep casting them during the drain life. And as they die off, you're going to have zombies that, you know, get procced. And then the real damage comes when you throw a dread shade on them. You can see they're critting anywhere from 300k to 500k on the training dummy, like absolutely doing ticks to its life. It's, it's pretty nutty what you can do with it. Um, like I said, the single target on it is absolutely insane. And that's really all there is to it. You just summon them ahead of you, hit them with a the drain life, keep going. And you literally just keep going through the map. All your health, all your mana is going to keep being replenished by it. And so with that, I'm going to leave you guys with some gameplay. Let me know in the comments below how you like the build. And if you are looking for another build or have been trying one and haven't quite figured it out, make sure to comment it and I'll look into it. As always, stay safe, travelers. Until next time.